Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsan Zavul, and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to do various types of aligning using machine tools. Before I go into this, I do want to make it clear that machine tools is not native to Blender, it is an add-on, and you do have to go and get it. I would recommend that you get it from Gumroad, even if you have and normally use Blender Marketplace. Blender Marketplace has a minimum payment of $1, I believe it is. Whereas if you go to Gumroad, you can get it for free. Okay, there is also the Deus Ex version, which has additional things to it and is well worth getting. And if you've got the standard version, which is free, you basically just click name price and you can put in whatever you think is fair, including zero. So do bear that in mind. It is an add-on, but it is free. So this tutorial came about because I had a question by someone who wasn't sure how to use this or more importantly, was actually a bit confused about this because there is one element that's not particularly clear. So I'm gonna to go to edit preferences and here's where you'd normally install your add-ons. So you do need to install this, but once you've done that, you just type in machine with a three. Now I also have mesh machine, which is a totally different paid for add-on. It is by the same company and it is fantastic, but we're just gonna look at machine tools, which is the free one. Now this actually comes with a lot of this already off. I think it comes with something like just that on. I think it might start with the focus. And while there are various ones of these that I would turn on automatically, the cleanup and the smart vertex and smart edge and smart face are particularly useful. The ones that I want to talk about here is the align object option, but also, and this is where the confusion comes from, there is an align pie as well. And these are two very different things. And I want to go through what they do to make sure everyone's clear about how they're different. So I'm gonna start with just the align tool. And then we come down here, save preferences. I've got auto save on, so that's fine. So what this does, if I just press shift and A and bring it in a quad sphere, you can see I've got in the bottom right hand corner, all the keys that I'm doing with screencast keys. So if I do forget to mention anything, you can see it. But this is a very, very useful tool. If I just move this around a little bit more, what you'll see this does is if I click two objects, so I'm gonna click the object that I want to move first and then the one I want to move it to and just press Alt and A, you will see that this will align them to exactly the same point. And if I click down here, you can choose how this is going to align the object. For example, if I only wanted to align it on the Z axis, I could come in here and just click it so only the Z axis is aligned. And if I go into side view, you can see that their origins are perfectly aligned. If I go into top view, because I moved it around, you can see they're not aligned in the x-axis. Well, if I click x-axis, they now are. Or if I click off axis and click y-axis, they're now aligned on the y-axis. So this is really useful and a very quick way of aligning things. Now, obviously you could do, if I just move this up again, you could do this without this add-on. Machine Tools does not claim to be like the be all and end all. It doesn't claim to do massive amount of things that you couldn't do manually. It just saves time. For example, I could go into here, press N and the items, and I could take in that my, well, actually this isn't moved anywhere, so let me just move that up slightly. I could go, well, here's my Z. I'm gonna control and see that, and then I'm gonna click on this object, and then control and V that in, and I've aligned it. Like, all it's doing is saving you all that time. All I've got to do is Alt A, and it's there. And also you can obviously play around with the other axes as well. It just saves a lot of time. It also aligns the rotation, which you can take off and you can do it as well for scaling. Though I'm gonna be honest, I never really use that. The other thing that you can do with it is if you've got this object here, notice I've only clicked one object. If I press Alt and A, at the moment, it itself is the active object. But if I change that to origin, now it's just moving to the origin. And then I can change that to be only in certain axes, just like I did with the other one. But I find active the most useful one to play around with. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that this works entirely off of the origins. So you can see I select on the Z axis and those origins are aligned. This can be quite useful. I'm just gonna go into edit and preferences and select one of the other pie menus, which is the cursor and origin manipulation pie. This thing's so good. And what this allows me to do is if I go into edit mode, for example, face mode, I can just press shift and S and it comes up with this awesome pie menu, which means that now, cause I've got that face selected, I can move the object origin really quickly to that face. And again, this is just a time saving thing. I could, if I undo that, I could do this another way. It just takes longer. I could go to that face, go to mesh, snap, 
and then snap cursor to the active, which will take it to the active face. Then I've got to go off, come into here, object, set origin, and set origin to 3D cursor, and I've done the same thing. It's just so much faster being able to press Shift and S, and here I can actually just move the cursor back to the origin, and then I can just come in face mode and then Shift and S and move the origin to that face or to this face. So it's really quick. The other thing that I could do is if I come into this object here, go into side view and go into vertex mode, I could select the bottom vertex and shift and S. And then now because I've got a vertex selected, I can now move the origin to that vertex. So now the origin is down there. And the reason this is useful is instead of having the centers line up, I might want to click the object I want to move, click the object I want to align it to, Alt and A, and now it moves it onto the Z that's going to align, in this instance, the bottom. So now the bottom of these is totally level. So a really useful option there in terms of an alignment tool. But importantly, if I go into the object and go into whatever mode, let's say face mode, and click Alt and A, nothing is coming up. There is no tool currently active here. This only works in object mode. Now this is the opposite, if I come down here, to the align pi. Now if I activate this, I've got auto save on, so I don't need to click save, but you might have to click save preferences. Now if I click on this object and come into vertex mode, and I'm just gonna move this vertex around, so just somewhere there. At this point, if I want to align the vertex to something, and it's the same rule, I click on the vertex I want to align, then the one I want to align it to, now if I press Alt A, I get this useful Pi, which allows me, and the important ones are these one, two, three, four. If I go to the bottom, it just moves it downwards to that object. And then if I came sideways, Alt A, and go to the left, it's going left, and then come here, and then if I come here and here, Alt A and left, you can see I've now reformed my perfect cube. So, well, why is this useful? Why do I want to be able to align these? Well, it's just a time-saving thing. If I just S and Y to scale this out, I'm gonna control and A to apply the scale, and I'm just gonna go into edge mode and control and R and just add in some extra edge loops. Let's say something like that, and then go into vertex mode. So I wanted to move some of these things around. For example, let's take those and G and Z them up. So I've got something like this. I'm actually gonna go into X-ray mode and G and Z those down. So I've got this and I'm looking at the object and I suddenly realize, no, I don't like this. I actually want this to go a bit further. I could, we'll start G and Z and guesstimate where that is, but actually it's really useful just to be able to Alt A up and then they're aligned. It's really, really quick. Or if I don't like that, Alt A down and then it's done. So it's a really, really quick way of just moving things around and aligning things perfectly. Now it does have a couple of other really funky functions uh, and this one's a bit more complicated. So I'm just gonna go through this. You can, and actually I'll demonstrate it first. If I go here, you can Alt A and you can straighten and you'll notice that has straightened this perfectly. So these are now in a straight line. Now the way this works, if I undo it, is this is registering the first vertex I select and then importantly, whichever one is last. So first and last matters. And then Alt A and straighten and it's done it. Now, one thing to be aware of here, if I just do that one more time, Alt A and straighten, is that this doesn't actually, well, it doesn't move things only in the Z axis. If we have a look at this, it has moved them along slightly. For example, this was vertical and now it's not gonna be honest I don't know why it does that and it doesn't appear if I just do it again that there is a way of stopping that so we are a bit limited and it can also do some funky things because of the fact that it works on the first and last vertex that's clicked and the line that's drawn with them so say for example I click that one first and then shift click one two three and that one last and click alt a and then go straighten it will attempt to straighten them in line with the first and last vertex. 
but again you'll notice it pulls things to the side so this doesn't seem to work perfectly i will say that actually once you've done that there are things you can do with this in fact let me just uh change this round a bit so i'm going to go there 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 and there and then alt a and straighten now if you just go into here and this is just standard blender that's doing this if i press gg i can move along this line up here but you'll notice if I move down it starts moving along this edge which isn't in line if I go up a little bit so on this edge which is aligned and then press C you'll see that this now extends that line out and I can just drag this further down to say there so you can get around this it's just not perfect and then I could GG and move this along so just to be clear what I did here, so by pressing GG, so that's G twice, what that means is that it's now linked or only can move along one of the edges coming off of the vertex. And if I then press C, it clamps it to the edge that I'm currently on, but allows me to move further. So that's a little trick. That bit works in standard Blender. Now it should also be mentioned, I'm just going to do this really quickly, that this align does work in other things. So for example, if I select a load of faces, I can just press Alt A and go to the right and it will align all of the faces to the right of my view. And similarly, I could Alt A and move it to the left, which will flatten it. The other thing that I can do, which is quite funky, is if I Alt A, you can see here we've got some options including the cursor, but also the origin. So if I move this horizontally, you'll notice now, or if I go into X-ray mode, that it is in line with the origin of that object. So there are some really funky things you can do with this. Let's shade that flat so it's a bit clearer, to make or to do some interesting things using machine tools. The important thing is that the align tool is to do with aligning objects, the align pie is to do with aligning vertices, faces, or edges, anything where you're in edit mode. The confusion comes because both of them use Alt A as a shortcut. If you did want to change that, you can go to key maps here, and you'll notice that the align pie in edit mode is to Alt A. You could change this if you wanted to, but I like having them both as Alt A because effectively I just know one's in edit mode and one's in object mode. So hopefully that's two functions of Mesh Machine that's going to make your life easier and quicker for you. In actual fact, there was three in there if you include that cursor and origin pie. Great time-saving functions from an add-on that is free.